Welcome back folks to another installment of Tone Quest. Hope you all are staying well and safe wherever you are during these strange and difficult times. This is episode 3 of season 2 and boy oh boy this has clearly been one of the most difficult and time consuming tones for me to create. Yes folks we are talking about the amazing tone from the man Pliny himself. Now I've literally spent a week or probably more trying to dial in this tone so I'm confident it's not a lot if I ask you to stick around and not skip the video. So bear with me and let's dial it in. As always, we'll be breaking down this video into a few sections and section one is going to be some background about the tone. You see, the more I dug into my research about this tone, the more varying answers I got. And that made it so, so, so more challenging to find out what's really going on. My first reference is the most obvious one, a video from Rick Piatto where Pliny dials in a tone right in front of us and reveals some of his secrets, which inclines towards a 5150, 50 watt blue amp but all we get to know about the cab is that it's a 4x12 Mesa with V30 speakers. Well, which one? We never find out. So, as a next step, I began to scour the internet for clues and landed on a forum post right here on our XFX community pages where it became even, even more confusing. I read opinions about him using a Mesa Boogie amp, a Friedman, Super Tweet, custom audio amplifiers, JCM800, FAS lead, and many, many more. You see where I'm going with this, right? I got really confused. If you've ever dialed in a tone, the amp is only half of the equation and the other half, yes, you guessed it right, the cab. No one talked about a cab except for one kind gentleman who hinted towards in a combination of Mesa V30 cab and an ENGL V30 cab. But unfortunately, that also did not bring me close. So as a next step, I tried out the trial version of Pliny's signature plugin, Archetype Pliny, and it did sort of give me an idea of what the tone should sound like, but again, which amp is it based on? No one really knows. People claim that it's either a Friedman or a 5150. Now you may ask why did I not tone match it because even to tone match you would probably need to have an idea of what amp actually it is. Okay, typically my research narrows me down to a couple of amps by now but here I was with multiple amp choices and multiple cabs and to be honest with no good backing track which trust me really helps a lot. So after days of trying I led to the following conclusions which are all ballpark ideas when you want to dial in a similar low gain Pliny style tone. First and foremost, a considerable amount of compression is needed, if not a lot at the start of your signal chain. Second, an overdrive or a drive pedal for extra tone and boost perhaps is going to help. The amp is probably going to be a choice between a 5150 or a Friedman of some sorts. I ruled out the other amp's choices by year and days of trying out. The cab is probably a 4x12 Mesa V30 cabinet, mic'd with a ribbon 160 mic which is not available in the XFX. Considerable high cut in the EQ to cut out most of the highs and the fizz and as the tone we want is really fat and smooth. Here's the thing though, I feel even if you get all the things right in terms of the gear, getting the same amount of dynamics and compression and all the other effects as in the studio track is probably going to be next to impossible. So be prepared to accept some compromises. <laughs> Are you with me so far? Yes? Then let's dive in and dial it in. Alright guys, this is going to be section 2. This is where we're going to be going into the axe edit and dialing in the preset from scratch. For reference, I'm playing my Ernie Ball Music Man JP15 guitar. It's got the Ernie Ball regular slinky strings on there. I'm pretty much playing on the neck pickup. If you haven't checked out the playthrough yet, I recommend you go and do it right now so that this video will make much more sense to you. Okay, usually what we do is we start off with an amp and a cab, but this time we're going to start things differently. We're going to start from the beginning of the signal chain and then jump into the amp and the cab. So first things first, we're going to dial in is the compressor. Now, if you've checked out uh, Pliny's videos, he usually talks about having a lot of compression and we know he loves a lot of compression, especially for his low gain sort of a tone. So what we're going to do is start off with a compressor here. I'm going to change it from a studio comp to actually a pedal comp because this is somewhat in line with his signature plugin Archetype Pliny. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the compression and add a lot of more compression. I'm going to bring it up to all the way 10. I don't think I change any of the other values in here. I'm going to leave pretty much as it is. Next up what we're going to do is actually add the amp. Drum roll! <laughs> Which amp is it going to be? And it's going to be a 59 bass guy. I'm just kidding folks, that's the default amp that comes up when you choose an amp block. Obviously, as I talked about the amps in the section one, if you've missed that, you should go and watch it. 
what we talked about is it's either a selection between a 5150 a 50 watt blue amp or one of these Friedman amps over here so you see you've got Quite a lot of choices to make and if you like me you like to fiddle between amps and try different amps out if you try and choose the 5150 50 watt blue or the friedman be you'll be splitting hairs and you'll be going on for days and days trying to figure out which one sounds better to me they both sound pretty much the same uh, obviously there's going to be differences but my ear can't differentiate them too much so i actually chose neither one of them which one would i go with I actually went with the Friedman HPE, which is the hairy brown eye. Don't ask me why it's called hairy brown eye. It's just called a hairy brown eye. We're going to leave everything at default here. What we're going to do is add the cab as well. Now, from what I talked about earlier in section one again, it's probably going to be a V30 cab with Celestian speakers and it's probably inclining towards a Mesa cab as well. So if you hear his tone, I'm pretty confident he's pretty much using a third party IR or a different cab outside of the stock cabs. But I did settle down on a couple of cabs. Um, so I'm going to talk about these right now. If you talk about Mesa V30, the first cab that comes to your mind are these two is F073 and F074. These are stock cabs. The first one is a 57 to 121 and the second one is a 906 to 421. These are mixes of the mics that we use to actually make these IRs. Now, if you remember, I talked about the 160 mic being used um, for, on his signature plugin and that's what we want to simulate, but that's not available in the XFX2. So if you Google, you'll find out that it's pretty much a mix of 57 and 121 is what's going to bring you close to the 160 mic. So I went ahead and chose this cab, which is a mix of 57 and 121. I also made this a stereo ultra rest this time. I'm going to turn off the link because I don't want the same cab. What I chose as a second cab is actually a fractal cab, which is the V30 84047. You can Google and find out more about this cab, but I really found it very, very close sounding. Again, this is by ear. This is no rule as such. There are more V30 cabs in there, which you can try. Uh, you can also go for the FSM57 Recto or the M160 Recto over here. They can also sound good. Or if you have third party ERs, you can feel free to change that as well. This one, I actually went ahead and mic'd with a Ribbon 121 mic here because as I said, 57 or 121 is going to get you close to the M160. And this, I think, was a good set of a mix of cabs for me to get the sort of tone that I wanted. Now everything is at default. This is how the tone is sounding. I'm going to play a part which is on uh, full volume. Of course, it's not sounding anywhere close to the tone. It's having that aspect of the tone, but it's not sounding close. It's missing a lot of drive and obviously we got to change the settings in the amp as well because it's missing a lot of drive because probably because of the compressor in there but we'll not touch the compressor we're going to add something else in there before that let's tweak the amp and change a few values over here i'm going to bring the input drive down to four pace is going to come down to 3.4 and so is the mid going to come down to 3.4 uh, you might need to add more mids based on your guitar because my guitar is more bit based the treble is going to come down to 4 or 4.1. Uh, the presence is also going to come down to 3.6. Depth, I'm going to really bring down to 0.5 because otherwise it gets too boomy for me. The master volume, I'm going to bring it up to 8. And as I've not pushed it to 10, I'm going to change the level to minus 10 over here so that it compensates and levels out equally. Uh, also, what we're going to do is add a drive in the beginning. Now, when it comes to the drive pedal, you'll hear him talk about the Tube Screamer quite a lot, which is the T808 uh, drive pedal over here. But I did not go with this. Why? Because you see this high cut over here. I think it's probably with the reason why it gave me a very honky sort of a tone when I chose this and combined with the Freeman HPE. So I did not go with this. What did I go with? I actually went with the FET preamp, which sort of gives me a much more cleaner boost and it doesn't affect my tone much because everything's at max out over here. Not the low cut, the low cut is pretty much low, but yeah, the high cut maxed out pretty much. So what I did is I brought the drive down to around 2.5, I think, 2.6 maybe. And the tone, I think I pushed it up to 6.4. And the level also I pushed up to around uh, 7, I think. With that done, this is how we are sounding. Now I'm not going to play with full volume because these parts are played with lower volume. <laughs> That 
that's sounding very nice and I think it's getting closer to the tone that we want. What we're going to do is go into the cab and go into the advanced block and change the high cut all the way up. Now you would say why would you do that? Because what I saw in one of his videos from, I specifically remember, I think it was a Rick Beato video where he goes in and dials in a PEQ block and what he does is use the blocking section of the frequency type to actually cut down all the fizz and all the highs from the tone. So we're going to do something similar over here. We're going to change the frequency type to blocking. And this is where you can play around and choose the right frequency for you. For me, I think 6000 hertz worked really well. It help me in cutting out some of the fizz and some of the highs from the actual tone. Now you might not hear them very clearly when you're hearing them on your desktop monitors or your pair of speakers, but if you wear headphones, you can actually hear the fizz getting cut out and you'll hear the difference. So with that done, this is how we're sounding. That's sounding pretty pretty sweet so that's pretty much the main tone section over there the next block that we're going to add is a very very important block it's called the subscribe block <laughs> why is it called the subscribe block because without that block this signal chain won't be complete it's a very very important block because i need your support uh, in order to make these presets and keep these series going so i'm very very close to a thousand subs and i definitely want to do more on the channel and make more videos especially during this time where we've got so much time on our hands i definitely you want to give back more to the community so make sure you subscribe and make sure that you are in tune with the channel so that I don't have to spam everywhere about all of my videos so do subscribe and make sure you fill up that block in there <laughs> thanks a lot okay moving back enough of that self-promotion let's get back to the tone I'm gonna add a delay over here you noticed I left that block blank because still got the subscribe block in there <laughs> what we're gonna do is add a delay now when it comes to delay I heard many things from many many people and I've read mostly that he is using a ping pong delay and which makes sense because if you hear the you know the intro part of the song which is this part you'll hear the delay ping ponging left and right and you'll probably hear it uh, very very prominently for a couple of repeats but I did not go with a ping pong delay, the reason being because to get those number of prominent repeats, I think you got two repeats very, very prominently. You'll have to push the feedback up quite a lot. And when you do that, you're going to get more repeats naturally because you're pushing the feedback so high up because you want that repeat to be so prominent. So I did not go with a ping pong delay. In fact, I went with a multi delay because that seemed much, much more useful to me in this case. What I did was actually use a 10 tap delay. And uh, this is something which you can always use whenever you want a fixed number of repeats and you want the delay to stop right after that. And you have much more control over the decay of the repeats and you have controls over the levels of the repeats as well. So this is what I used. Uh, I'm going to change the tempo to around one fourth over here and I'm going to reduce the number of taps to two because that's the number of repeats I want. Uh, delay is going to come down to 11%, not 1%, 11%, thank you. Uh, the high cut's going to come down to 5800 and change it to a stereo and what I'm going to change is the shape to up and down as well, the pan shape because that's going to give us the ping pong effect left and right. I also brought down the mix to around 22% and I don't believe I changed the levels of any of the repeats but this is going to give you a fixed number of repeats. So here this part again over here. <laughs> Do you hear that? It stops right after two repeats and which is the kind of tone we want. So Now you could use a ping pong delay and I've in fact left the, left the delay block in there for you to turn it on. Just don't turn on both of them together because you'll be creating a black hole of infinite repeats. No, I'm just kidding. Don't turn on both of them together because obviously you don't want that much delay. So keep one of them on. If you're turning on the delay, switch off the multi-delay and vice versa. 
Okay, next block uh, is going to be a reverb. Now, when it comes to reverb, Pliny usually likes a lot of reverb and you can hear him talking about in multiple workshops and also when he dials in in tone, I think he uses a lot of reverb, especially for his clean tone as well. So what we're going to do is choose a reverb. I did not use the reverb in the playthrough though because uh, the the backing track or the actual original track already has so much reverb, so I did not use it. What we're going to use here is a medium hall and I'm going to change it to high. Pliny usually likes his size turned all the way up and I'm going to change the time to around 4 seconds and I believe I did not change anything in the EQ mix I'm going to leave it up to 20% but up to you if, if you feel it's more reverb you can always tone it down or bring it up based on your needs so with that done uh, let's play something with full volume rather Well, that's pretty much it folks that's how the preset is sounding you know where the preset is going to be sitting it's going to be on exchange download it today and give me your feedback make sure you like the video and make sure you subscribe if you like the content and i'll see you guys in the next episode for tone quest keep rocking stay safe folks and do not go out if you don't need to cheers keep rocking bye bye